What is up everybody? Welcome to the Nightmare Night Special. So today is Halloween. And for some people it's tomorrow, I don't know. But I'm going to be doing some stories and they are going to all be included in my Nightmare Night Special. Um, over the course of the day, uh, which starts now, I'm going to be reading a lot of stories. I'm going to be releasing as many as possible. And tomorrow I will also do some stories and some readings and very possibly a live stream on YouTube. So uh, yeah, you guys are free to go um, check all the other stories out that I will read to do in that I will read today. Uh, they will be in the Nightmare Night special, so just you know look at them. So let's first start off with something that I. Um, well, it's actually somebody that I particularly enjoy. And that person is Slenderman. So this is a bonafide version of Slenderman. It's a one-shot, and uh, uh, actually a first one-shot, and the title is misspelled. It says Slenderman. I don't know if that's done on purpose, but... Uh, you could say Slenderpmain. I have no idea. It's a relatively short one, and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's get going. She's always watching. <gasps> ah, why didn't I ever listen to them? Better yet, why didn't I listen when it actually mattered? Now she's coming for me. I know she is. She's going to find me. You can never hide from her. She knows where I am, and she's coming. I can feel it. I can feel her eyes. They're watching me. The twisty yellow of her eyes. It's always watching. Always there. Wait, what was that? She's here. Not long now. Only a matter of time before she comes for me. She's already here and she can find me. You can't outrun her. You can't hide. I'll tell you my story. Maybe you will listen better than I did. And this will never happen. To you. I'm a brony. For those of you who don't know, it means I am a fan of the show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. A few months ago, one of my friends convinced me to watch it, and now I'm hooked. This sh that show is the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Or at least, it was. Let's gee, start off by getting something to drink. I've now doubled the capacity of... Uh, so that I can drink because I'm not using a Coca-Cola bottle. It's like one and a half liters or something. Which is awesome. I enjoyed every episode. Every, every, every chance I got to watch it. I even own plushy, ver plushy versions of the main six. It's a major show. It's an amazing show. But it has one major problem. A background pony. Derpy hopes. My friend told me about the show. My friend who told me about the show told me something else recently. She said there was supposedly a pony who showed up somewhere in the show in every episode. She said that sometimes you have to look really hard to find that pony. But she's always there at least once. Always there. Always watching. She can see everything at once. That's why you can't hide. That's why she can always find you. Her eyes, you see, they aren't like normal eyes. They're a bright yellow and they always look in two different directions at once. That's how she sees you. She can watch you, but you'll never know that she is. But I know. I know now what she's watching. The other eye swivels to look at something else. But one. One is always searching for those who know the secret. Alexis had told me about this pony, this Derpy Hose, because of a few rumors she'd heard. Apparently this pony's in every episode. That was something she'd found interesting. But what made her bring it up was the second rumor. Something called the Slender Mane. It's about Derpy's secret. She doesn't like any pony to know about her. She can't keep her silent vigil if every pony if every pony knows she's there. It's hard to be a silent watcher when your cover is blown. So whenever somebody learns about her and realizes that she is there, she has to silence them. Permanently. According to Alexis, when somebody re really notices that she's there, even if they show no sign of knowing, she knows that they've become aware. Then she comes for them. It may take a while. Days, weeks, even a few months in some cases, but she will come. Well, fuck. I've seen her in like every episode, so I guess I'm screwed now. 
They say you, you'll begin to see her, always at a distance. She'll be there, there in the reflection of the mirror, almost too small to recognize. When you look out the window, you'll catch a glimpse of her blonde mane before she disappears again. When you turn, you will see her in the corner of your eye. She's always there, always watching from a distance. Over time, though, she gets closer. When you begin to notice, all hope is lost. Soon the images in the mirror begin to grow. You see her almost as though she's in the room, standing just on the opposite side. In the window, she draws closer, moving from quick flashes at the distance to her standing there just across the street. She's never gone once she's this close. You can see her. She's outside, in your closet, under your bed. When you close your eyes, you can see her face. You can see her eternally crossed, questioning eyes. Now you don't have to turn to see her on the edge of your vision. She seems to sit there, moving with you. Yet, she remains still, her vigil unbroken. Okay, that's creepy. Eventually, she can move no closer. She is standing behind you, looking over your shoulder when you look into a mirror. When you look out the window, she's there, separated from you only by the pane of glass. When you turn, she's no longer there. Instead, you can hear her haunting laughter echo through the air. No one else can see her. Can see her. Here. It's her. No one can hear her. You may think that she isn't there. Maybe you've finally cracked, gone off the deep end, so to speak. Don't worry, you're still sane at this point. Though I suppose that it's not something you'd want, either. It's then that she takes you. No one knows what happens after that. The only ones who had have seen what happens are the ones who are taken. And they have yet to be returned capable of telling anyone. In fact, few have returned at all. I laughed when I first heard this, first heard this story. Alexis didn't go into much detail. We only had a few minutes to talk. I thought it was some kind of joke. How could a pony that different, that different appear in every episode and not stand out? That seems kind of weird. Even if she was, how could a cartoon pony track people down and make them vanish completely? I thought it was absurd. Alexis laughed about it too. We left each other still joking about the whole thing and how stupid people had to be to believe it. I didn't get a chance to talk to anyone for a few days. My schedule kept me bit very busy. Between work and school, and just keeping up with all the things Pony, I had very little time to do anything. What little time I had, I spent reading up on this Slendermane story. According to, to the original story, dozens had gone missing. But of course, the comments showed that no one took it seriously. Who would? It just seemed so impossible. A few comments said things like, Watch out for her, she's coming. Or, oh my god, I thought it was, wasn't was true, true, but it is, or even, don't read this, ignore the whole thing and stop watching the show. I figured this was just the work of trolls or people who had gotten bored or something. Yeah, I would say so. And, just the thing, maybe the writer could use a little, paragraphs that are a little bit smaller, they seem rather big. Maybe that's just me being overly critical again, but, you know. I think they are a bit big, especially this one. It had been a week since I saw Alexis. She had been staying in her room and refused to talk to anyone. I finally managed to coax her out by going into her house and kicking her door open. Well, that's rude. She was a wreck. Her hair was a rat's nest of tangles and looked like it hadn't been washed since I'd seen her last. She had deep purple bags under her eyes and I could smell that she hadn't been worrying about hygiene. I asked her what happened. What had happened? Usually she was a neat freak. She would never allow us even a single hair to be out of place on her head. Whenever someone dropped a, even so much as a crumb, she would begin yelling about people being slobs until they picked it up. Now her room was trashed, flies filled the air, and dirty dishes covered with the remains of meals littered the floor. She told me she had been reading about the Slendermain story. I laughed. I didn't I didn't know then what I know now. If I if I had, I would have taken her much more serious and things would be a lot different now. She glared at me. The look on her face crossed between disbelief, frustration, and though I wasn't sure at this time at the time, fear. She sat sat there quietly as my laughter quickly died out. You don't believe that stupid old story, do you? I asked as the silence continued. She nodded. 
And I'm sorry, bro, but she does believe it. She told me that she had looked up the story and decided to look into it. She said she'd found the pony in one of the episodes before and wanted to know if she was at least in every episode. Her voice cracked and her eyes widened with every word. I'll never forget what happened next. She leaped off her bed and grabbed me by my collar. Okay. Hmm. She pulled my head down until it was next to hers. I looked into her eyes. I could see the fear even then. They were, they were bloodshot and the pupils seemed almost ragged. She's there, Alexa said, her voice barely more than a whisper. She's always there. The story is true. It's all true. She fell over on the floor. At first I thought something serious had happened. It was clear she hadn't been t taking very good care of herself. I saw the slow rise and fall of her chest and realized she'd just fallen asleep. Even now her face seemed full of emotion, not the usual peaceful visage given by sleep. Something was seriously wrong with her. Even I could tell that much. I left the room to find her some help. I was fairly certain her mom was home. If not, then I could at least call someone. No one was home, and when I tried calling, the phone line was dead. Aww, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> how unfort- how rather unfortunate. <laughs> ah, just kidding. Not even a dial tone broke the unnatural stillness that seemed to fill the house. I had a strong feeling that something was very wrong. I went back into her room, but she wasn't there. I caught a glimpse of Gray in the corner when I came in. I tried look looking for her, and I yelled her name all the while. I couldn't find her anywhere in the house. I thought I heard a car, and looking out the window, I saw her mom pulling into the driveway. I didn't want to try and explain anything, so I left through the back door. Aw, oh, that's too bad. You're... <laughs> Your friend, girlfriend Alexis has been taken by Derpy. <laughs> Derpy stealing people! <laughs> wow. Never saw that one coming. That's why I like stories. I, when you don't see anything coming, you're just getting more interested in the story. When I got home, I was determined to see if there was anything to, the, to this story. I was sure I knew how things had to work. I thought nothing could go wrong. That's what I get for thinking, I suppose. I went back through every episode, not really watching, just mo moving the track bar along for this strange gray pony. I found her. Every single episode involved her in some way. In Feeling Pinky Keen, she dropped the Antoine furniture on Twilight. She was on a bridge in Hearts and Hoofs Day. In Luna Eclipse, she was dressed as a paper bag and fell into the tub of water that was being used to bob for apples. I had no idea how I could have missed her all, the t all this time. She even spoke in one episode. I had just switched off my computer. How could I have missed all of that? I turned away from the monitor as I face palmed. It's so obvious now. As I pulled my hand away from my forehead, I realized that I wasn't alone. I could almost feel something was watching me. The curtains on my window were open. I remember closing them and blasted the sun's light no matter what time it is. To add things, I didn't completely trust the old man who lived next door. Sometimes I could see binoculars on the sill of the window across from mine. A few times there'd even be a camera. <gasps> uh oh. I moved close I moved to close the curtains when a spot of gray and yellow caught my attention. I turned but the color stayed in the corner of my eye. I rubbed the spot, thinking perhaps something was stuck on my eye to my eye. The spot remained. I looked at the window again as I pulled the curtains closed. I could almost swear that there was something gray on the sidewalk just across the road. Ah, oh, she's coming for you, bro. Start running, but she's going to catch up. So, a sinking feeling shot through my stomach as a crazy thought ran, across, ran through my head. It's her. The story was true. I chuckled a little. Even I could hear the edge of my voice. No, I said to myself. And now something, stuff's being thrown outside. What the fuck? <laughs> That's just a load of crap. There's no pony trying to kill me because I learned a secret about it. What fully convinced me was... What fully convinced me that what was wrong was when I saw my reflection in the darkened screen of the computer mirror. A gray face filled the space behind me, its eyes staring in two different directions. 
Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, here she comes. I screamed and jumped backwards. I couldn't make myself turn away from the monitor, though. I could see the face staring at me. I picked up the monitor, monitor and throw, through. That should be throw. Throw it out the window. My gut churned. I believe that's supposed to be turned. I just saw the gray figure just outside. It was a glimpse of col it was just a glimpse of color as the curtains closed behind the offending screen. But I knew who it was. I know what it means. The next few hours passed in a rush. I was determined to stay aware of my surroundings. I positioned myself so that nothing could possibly sneak up on me. I had grabbed a baseball bat and a few knives from the kitchen. I wasn't going down without a fight. Now I can hear her. The bubbly giggling, the repeating, nearly silent calls for muffins. She's everywhere. She's all around. I heard her in the walls, in the floor, in the ceiling. I thought I heard her voice coming from the bat, so I threw it away. As I watched it clatter across the floor, I could see her standing in the doorway. I blinked and she dis had disappeared. Oh, not completely, of course. Every time I closed my eyes, how brief, no matter how brief the darkness was, I could see her face increase to insane, insane proportions. Every time I see it, time seems to slow down. I can feel her studying me with every glance, each one seeming to last an eternity. Then I open my eyes and time seems to resume. Hmm. I grabbed a notebook and a pen and started writing this down. Hopefully someone can learn from my mistakes. Celestia knows I never will. She's coming now. I've taken too long. I'm now convinced that there is no way to stop her. No way to slow her down. Once she knows about you, you are hers. Until she's ready to dispose of you. So now, for the last time, I warn you, do not look for the Great Pegasus. If you see her, stop watching and avoid anything MLP related. You will live much longer that way. She is here now. Iluna's name fade in place. Pace. Okay, that's uh... That actually was a very good one, I should say. I, um... Yeah, it's kind of good, you know, not much dialogue, but, um... It was good, uh, I liked it. Um, and yeah, you know, the the paragraphs could have been a bit shorter, you know, because... It seems like it's a little walling, you know, the, like, you know, walls of text. Could have used a little more dialogue, you know. It's just really describing what he's doing, not not so much for talking, which is a bit disappointing. But it's n no problem, really. I I liked it. I enjoyed. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this. And uh, yeah, I now know that the <laughs> that the name uh, is correct. And uh, you know, it's um yeah, it's a pretty good story uh you know i would have never thought of you know derpy being slender man or slender mare or slender main or slender mare um but uh yeah i thought it was pretty original <laughs> You're like no it's not rainbow shut up i say that's my opinion and i stick with it i'll see you guys in the next episode of my nightmare night special later